The theme of this unit that we are covering now is on understanding the biological effects of small molecules. So in this unit, we're going to look at several different examples of evaluating the biological effects of small molecules, where we really get into that intersection of chemistry and biology and look at how we can use chemistry to understand biological systems, which is the heart of chemical biology. So to begin this journey, we're going to be looking at the phenomenon referred to as quorum sensing. In this video, what we are going to explore is what exactly is quorum sensing. In the videos that follow, we're going to be looking at what specific types of molecules are involved in this process of quorum sensing, how do organisms produce these molecules, how do organisms detect and respond to these molecules, and can we use some of this information about quorum sensing to guide the discovery of new drugs? So first things first, we need to answer the question of what is quorum sensing? When we evaluate quorum sensing, which I will abbreviate for convenience here as QS for quorum sensing, quorum sensing, much like a quorum of people, refers to a certain number of people necessary to have a meeting or necessary to take a vote. A quorum is a group of bacteria that are large enough that it triggers a change in the bacterial behavior to allow the bacteria to behave as a group rather than as individuals. So it enables these single celled organisms to engage in collaborative behaviors. So what quorum sensing is put down into words here is we can describe it as changes in bacterial behavior in response to changes in the cell population density where if the cells are present at very low densities, the behavior of those bacteria cells is very different than once the population density reaches a certain, a certain level. So we're looking at changes in bacterial behavior in response to changes in the cell density. And we will be addressing over this video in the next few videos, how this process works. How are bacteria able to detect changes in the density of bacterial cells around them and trigger changes in their behavior in response to that? And it all comes down to chemistry. And while we describe quorum sensing primarily as a phenomenon among bacteria, and it's certainly in bacterial systems where this is best studied and best understood, quorum sensing also occurs in other types of living things as well. For example, insects can coordinate their behaviors by, re by the process of quorum sensing as well. There is also some evidence that cancer cell lines use quorum sensing as a way of governing and regulating their behaviors too. So while we are going to focus our upcoming discussions primarily on quorum sensing in bacteria, because this system is the best studied, we can extend our conceptual knowledge of quorum sensing to include other types of organisms as well. So when a bacteria changes its behavior in response to changes in the cell density, how is this going to happen? What is the overview of this process of quorum sensing? In quorum sensing, what is going to happen is that the bacteria that is engaging in quorum sensing produces and releases small organic molecules into the environment around it. So in step one of the quorum sensing process, the bacteria that will engage in quorum sensing, so the QS bacteria, we will call these, this is bacteria of a particular species that are going to be communicating and coordinating behavior with other members of that same species. So the quorum sensing bacteria produce and release into the environment around them. So it's being excreted from the cell, small molecules that we refer to as chemical signals. We call these chemical signals because they are going to be compounds that act to signal changes in behavior or trigger changes in behavior of other organisms around them. So the quorum sensing bacteria are going to produce and release these small molecules that are known as chemical signals. The chemical signals that are being released here could also be referred to synonymously as autoinducers. 
because they are going to act to trigger or induce changes in the behavior of a group of bacteria. And so after these compounds are produced, as the bacteria are replicating and present in this environment, as the number of bacteria in that environment, the concentration of bacteria in other words, increases, the concentration of the small molecule autoinducers are going to increase as well proportional to the increase in the concentration of bacteria in that system. So in other words, the bacteria are constantly producing these autoinducer molecules, releasing them from the cells. And so hence, as the number of bacteria increases in that environment, the concentration of autoinducer increases as well. So the chemical signal, the autoinducer in other words, is going to go up in concentration with an increase in the bacterial population density. And when we refer to a bacterial population, we're referring to a member of a single species here. So we're using these as intraspecies communication signals. Intra meaning within the same species. So chemical signal increases the population of a particular species of bacteria increases. And then what happens is that once that signal reaches a certain threshold concentration, a high enough concentration, that is going to trigger widespread changes in the gene expression of the bacteria that are receiving that signal and enable them to coordinate a variety of group behaviors. So the chemical signals are produced, the concentration increases in the environment, and then once that signal reaches a high enough concentration, that is going to trigger changes in the gene expression of very specific genes within the genome of the bacteria to enable those bacteria to coordinate group behaviors. So the gene expression changes that take place are going to lead to changes in the behavior and generally a massive shift in the behavior to a very group oriented behavior. So gene expression changes, that result from this quorum sensing lead to changes in the behavior. And in those behavior changes, we're going to see a shift in the behavior toward group activities, toward coordinated group activities. And what are generally controlled by quorum sensing are traits in the bacteria that if the bacterium were exhibiting that trait as a single cell, that trait would not be particularly useful to the survival and thriving of that bacterium. But instead, when there are large numbers of that particular species of bacteria, that behavior leads to success of that population of bacteria as a whole. And so several behaviors are controlled by quorum sensing. These behaviors include, so writing out the behaviors that are controlled by quorum sensing, there is a large list of these. So I'm not going to be giving a comprehensive list here, but just a few of the highlights of the behaviors that are controlled by quorum sensing where bacteria excrete small molecules from their cells. Once those small molecules build up in the environment in proportion to the density of bacteria in that environment, massive behavioral changes are triggered. And some of those behavioral changes that are triggered by this phenomenon known as quorum sensing include virulence. Virulence is the propensity of a pathogen to infect the host. And so when we think about bacteria infecting a host, if there was just one or a few bacteria present and those bacteria attempted to infect a host, they would not be particularly successful at doing that because the host immune system would likely strike them down in very short order. On the other hand, once the bacteria have reached a quorum, they can turn on their virulence, their ability to infect the host and be much more successful at that as a group, as a large quorum of bacteria, than would be possible if 
It was just a small population of bacteria. Another behavior that is controlled by quorum sensing is the process of conjugation. Conjugation is where bacteria engage in gene exchange, where one bacterium can shuffle genes to another nearby bacterium. And that is under the control of quorum sensing mechanisms because if a bacteria were trying to exchange genes with another bacterium and there's no other bacteria nearby or there's a very low concentration of bacteria nearby, that would not be an effective process. And so conjugation is controlled by quorum sensing where as the population of cells reaches a certain threshold, the genes that enable conjugation become activated, meaning they become transcribed and translated to enable that process of conjugation to take place. A really cool example of a behavior controlled by quorum sensing is bioluminescence. The process where bacteria produce light. For example, some species of squid have a light organ that releases light that enables the squid to hunt and see at night. And that bioluminescence is the result of bacteria that live within that light organ. And when the bacteria are present in really low abundances, low concentrations, there is no benefit to those bacteria releasing light because it would be a very, very small amount of light. It would not be beneficial in the symbiotic relationship that they have with the squid. But instead, when the bacteria reach a certain threshold concentration where they can work together and make lots of light, it becomes a valuable adaptation. And so quorum sensing is used to turn on that light production once bacteria reach a certain high concentration. Additionally, quorum sensing controls a behavior referred to as biofilm formation, which if you've ever noticed a bunch of dirty dishes in your sink with a thick film of kind of gross residue on them, that is a biofilm. A biofilm is a group of bacteria that are enclosed by a sticky extracellular matrix. And that matrix allows the bacteria to sequester nutrients and also makes those bacteria more resistant to antibiotics than would otherwise be the case because you think of that matrix as trapping the antibiotics and preventing them from entering the bacterial cells. And so as a result, bacteria associated with biofilms can be a hundred times or more resistant to antibiotic antibiotics than bacteria that are planktonic, meaning bacteria that are free floating. And so there's an advantage to biofilm formation, but the formation of that biofilm, the enclosure of the cells in a sticky matrix requires that there be a relatively high concentration of cells present. Otherwise, the release of the material to create the sticky matrix would not be effective. And so this behavior is controlled by quorum sensing, where once the bacteria reach a certain threshold population, they excrete that extracellular matrix and create the biofilm that allows them to be encased in this protective sheath that protects them from environmental factors such as antibiotics in the environment or the variety of other challenges that bacteria face in surviving. So there's this huge list of behaviors controlled by quorum sensing. I have given just a few of those behaviors here. There are a variety of others that we could include on this list. And if we extended this quorum sensing phenomenon to include insects participating in quorum sensing and possibly cancer cells participating in quorum sensing, we would add to this list of behaviors that can be controlled by quorum sensing. But ultimately, what it comes down to is that the behaviors that are controlled by quorum sensing are going to be the behaviors where the organisms will benefit greatly from the behavior only if those organisms are present as a large group rather than as a single isolated cell. And so what quorum sensing essentially does is it allows these single celled organisms like bacteria to behave like they are multicellular organisms by coordinating behaviors much like our different organs of our body coordinate behaviors to allow us to succeed and thrive bacteria use quorum sensing as a way to coordinate their behaviors across groups to gain the advantages of multicellular life by these single-celled organisms. What we are going to look at in the upcoming videos is we are going to look at what types of molecules are able to act as autoinducers. In other words, what is the chemistry that's controlling these processes? What is the chemical structures of those autoinducers? How do organisms produce those autoinducers through enzyme catalyzed reactions? How do organisms go about detecting these autoinducer molecules in the environment? 
And can we use some of this information to guide the discovery of the next generations of drugs? Because certainly if we can design drugs that inhibit biofilm formation or inhibit the virulence, the ability of bacteria to infect cells, we could have on our hands a really powerful novel drug molecule. So we'll continue looking at that. We will also explore a TED talk by Dr. Bonnie Bassler, who was one of the pioneers in the study of quorum sensing. And in that video, she will be discussing some of her group's work and findings on quorum sensing molecules. So stay tuned for that.